LWO on WeatherNet. Uh, liftoff conditions looking pretty good. ESTS is ready for launch. Ignition. Liftoff. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Ten. Nine. Eight. Side booster ignition. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition and lift off. Falcon 9 is pitching down range. As you can see, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from the historic launch pad 39A at Kennedy Nominal Space Center, telemetry. carrying our stack of Starlink satellites and two ride shares into orbit. We throttle the engines down in preparation for max Q, or maximum aerodynamic pressure. This is the largest structural load that the vehicle sees during vehicle supersonic. This is the largest structural load that the vehicle sees during ascent, so slowing the vehicle down helps during that short period. In about a minute, we're gonna have three events happening back to back. First will be the main will be main engine cutoff, or as you'll hear it called out, Miko. This is where all nine M1D engines shut off and slow the vehicle down in preparation for the second event, stage separation. As the name suggests, this is where the first stage separates from the second stage, with stage one starting to make its way back to Earth for landing on our started. While stage two continues its journey with the third event, SES-1 or second engine start one. This is where MVAC will light up and begin to propel the second stage along with the Starlink and two rideshare satellites into orbit. So just a few seconds ago, we heard the call out that MVAC chill has begun. That's the same thing as what I described prior to liftoff for the M1D engines. We flow a little bit of that super chilled liquid oxygen into the turbo pump of the MVAC engine. Max Q. All right, there we heard the call out that we reached max Q. We flow a little bit of that super chilled liquid oxygen into the turbo pump of the MVAC engine, uh, helping to prepare the prop system for that super cold fluid to flow through. So there we can see that the engine Stage separation confirmed. All right, so on the left-hand side of your screen, we got the I'm first stage and the second, on the right-hand side, the second stage, and there we heard call out MVAC ignition. We can see that nozzle begin to develop a lovely orange glow as Earth rotates in the background. On the left-hand side, we got first stage deploying the grid fins in preparation for the drone ship landing. And there's our first view inside fairing the payload fairing. Uh, there we have visual and uh, call out there that fairing separation has occurred. As a reminder, we're going to be recovering the first stage with our drone ship, utilizing a view for today's recovery attempt. Love that view of MVAC. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. If you're just catching up with us, we had a successful launch of Falcon 9 from Kennedy Space Center's pad 39A. On the right side of your screen, you're looking at a live view of Falcon 9 Stage 2 as it delivers our Starlink and rideshare payloads to orbit. On the left, Stage 1 is cruising back to our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, in the Atlantic Ocean. Our Starlink satellites are in LEO, or low Earth orbit, 
at around 550 Both kilometers. Both vehicles are following nominal trajectories. Most satellites are around 36,000 kilometers in altitude at geo or at geostationary orbit. When the satellites are further from Earth, the round trip data time between the user and the satellite, it's also known as latency, is much higher, resulting in poor performance for activities like video calls and online gaming. Tico. And there we had second engine cutoff one, or Seco one. Stage one will execute two burns in order to wake, make its way back to Earth. The first is the entry burn, where three of the Merlin 1D engines will reignite. This helps to slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. The second burn is the landing burn, and this is a single engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on the drone ship. We do this at the last minute to conserve as much fuel as possible. Stage one, FTS is saved. Stage one, entry burn is started. And stage one, entry burn, shut down. There are a couple of Both events scheduled to happen in close proximity here. Stage one landing burn will begin and will finish its burn in about 25 seconds. And stage two, two up in space, at which point we'll enter the first coast period. Stage one landing burn has started. We've had a start of stage one. Turn as a reminder, ends. we may lose coverage of the vehicle as it attempts to land on the drone ship. Landing legs have deployed. Landing leg deployed. Stage two FTS is On the left-hand side of the screen, uh, got a beautiful uh, view uh, of a successful uh, landing. Uh, this marks our 84th uh, successful recovery of an orbital class rocket and the sixth recovery of this particular booster. Now, stage two is going to coast in this orbit for the next 45 minutes or so. While that happens, take a look at this animation showcasing where we are in the coast phase. We'll see you back here at T plus 54 minutes for a second stage relight and the deployment of, of our two ride chairs on board today. Welcome back to the webcast for our 28th Starlink mission. We're currently waiting for the relight of our second stage known as SES-2, and that'll be coming up in a, just under 10 seconds. MVAC reignition. Seco 2. Now, as a reminder, we have two ride shares on board today, one for Capella Space and the other for Tyback. In just under two minutes, we'll have our first ride share deployment for Capella. There we have a great view of the Starlink satellites, which we will be deploying later on. And of course, beautiful planet Earth rotating below. Uh, spacecraft deploy confirmed. All right, so there we heard the call out that we had successful deployment of that synthetic aperture radar satellite for Capella Space. Next up, we'll deploy the rideshare satellite for Tyvac, and that'll take place a few seconds after the T plus one hour mark. Capella Space is launching a synthetic aperture radar, or SAR, satellite into low Earth orbit to join its growing constellation of 24-7 all-weather Earth observation satellites. Forward spacecraft deploy confirmed. All right, there we heard the call out that that second rideshare satellite has been deployed. Stage two is going to coast in this orbit for the next 37 minutes or so before we deploy our Starlink satellites. While this happens, sit back and enjoy some more Space Jams. We'll see you back here at T plus one hour and 37 minutes. Hi, and welcome back to our webcast for our 28th Starlink mission and 15th mission so far this year. Now that we're coming up on deployment of our Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit or LEO. Acquisition of signal, Kate. Let's listen in for the call out of payload deploy. Starlink deploy confirmed. And we've confirmed deploy of the Starlink satellites. Now you can see the satellites, uh, the Starlink satellites out in space drifting away from the second stage. As a reminder, this is just their drop off orbit. Shortly, they will deploy their solar array. And over the next few days and weeks, they will distance themselves from each other and use their onboard ion thrusters to make their way into operational orbit. And with that, we'll bring our webcast to a close for today. Thank you to the range and FAA for supporting today's mission. 
If you're interested in Starlink service, head over to starlink.com and sign up. Thanks for joining us and have a good evening. <laughs>